But what I, what I would like to speak about is, is BRICS, and I think this has been a huge issue, you know, of, of how we've moved, and we've been hearing a lot about this, a lot of focus on emerging economies. China, Brazil, India have been growing, South Africa now in the fore. And one of the things that I think has been, that I was saying to you, I'm actually quite personally, I think when is this actually going to, to see benefit in terms of South Africa being part of BRICS? And, and, and South Africa actually being able to go into those economies and benefit the way those economies are benefiting not only from South Africa, but the African continent as a whole. Absolutely. Quite incidentally, when we got invited to the BRICS, when we joined the BRICS, we, our main thing was, our economies are not as big as they are, but certainly we're at the doorstep of Africa. And it seems to be the case now that even though that was our playing game, we haven't actually looked as deeply into Africa, um, you know, going into the growth of, uh, of Africa, which seven of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world are actually in Africa. And so we need to actually be looking at that and looking at the more important and rising sectors within uh, Africa. I, I want to talk about protectionist measures because this is something that became such a buzzword, particularly in the financial crisis, because of a lot of economies protecting their own economies. You know, and what we've seen is that when it comes to, to trade imbalances, where Africa for a long time, even at Doha, we saw that fall sure. apart, where, where you had these emerging economies say, you know what, we want to be able to operate in your economy the way you're operating in ours. And it seems as though some of the developing, not all of them, but some of the developing countries have made some kind of progress there, but Africa not doing so great. And it's still seems that we are at a disadvantage when it comes to that trade balance. Sure, absolutely. And I think one part of that stems from the fact that many of these countries, for example, have strong manufacturing sectors. Um, they've got, you know, and they've always depended on their exports in large part. And therefore, we haven't taken the advantage that we have in Africa to train among trade and invest amongst each other, among, for example, um, manufacturing sectors, agriculture. And then we can use that as our own basis in which to trade uh, interregionally. And I think that's something quite important. We've always also assumed also that this idea that South Africa is part of BRICS means that you know we have a free trade agreement in which we can just you know send our goods and they will be welcome. But there's a you know there's a there's a long history there of stories of protectionism mm -hmm. of exchange rates and all of that. Why is it that we are not looking here and looking at what strengths we have to share amongst each other whether we, for example we are you know busy with construction, infrastructure and that sort of thing and I think that's what we should be looking at and as, as, um, as investors and obviously trade partners. I want to take a little bit of focus on manufacturing because you, you have had people say that manufacturing and expanding manufacturing in any economy is such an amazing way to be able to provide jobs because that's where people that don't really have you know high-end skills would be able to go in there and would be able to contribute would create jobs so what I would like to ask you just in terms of you know the, the bricks and, and where they are and some of the offerings that we have seem quite similar you know what Brazil offers what India offers yeah. w what China offers you find that we, we, we seem to be competing you know in terms of our product offering. Sure. Is that a fair assessment? Well, exactly. I think we've all, you know, sort of said, well, you know, for example, in South Africa, we import a lot of clothes from China, everything is made in China. But there are other areas in manufacturing. When we talk manufacturing, for example, we can also talk agro-processing. So, um, you know, and in, in sub-Saharan Africa, we look at countries such as Zambia that has great arable land. South Africans are very good at, at farming. We've been doing it for quite some time, and we've said sometimes we've complained about the idea that, you know, water is a problem and we have to import it maybe from Lesotho. And then you come to this a part of the world, you know, that is sub-Saharan Africa, that's quite rich in land. Why is it that we are not producing food from there and then agro-processing, uh, bringing it to high levels? And I think that's something that we have a, a proper in into. Why is it, though, that you do sometimes find African economies trying to to beat a dead horse? And I'm just going to, to <laughs> say it like that yeah. because, I mean, for instance, clothing industry in South Africa, I mean, we know that that has pretty much collapsed. We continue to have all, you know, trying to revive this sector that will never probably, well, I can't say never, but, you know, yeah. for a long term, it's probably not going to be able to compete with a country like China, yet we continue trying to revive a sector like that. And I think it's an indication, really, that we have missed the basic point of trade, that you've got to try and focus on what you're good at. There are some things that, you know, you're well endowed at and something that you can good do very well. And I think in trying to compete in every sector is not very useful. We ought to be trying to do what we know best or that we have um, a, a relative advantage. So on. let's talk about that competitive adva advantage. I mean, we here on the African continent, we talk about arable land. There probably isn't another continent on the planet that probably has as much opportunity, you know, in terms of arable, arable land that we have here in Africa. And yet we continue, it seems, to not be, I mean, we still have starving people on the African continent. We still are not able to feed ourselves. So this is something that the whole world has been telling us. We 
we've been saying we can do it and yet we don't seem to be able to deliver so I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we have in terms of shortcomings in our own selves yeah absolutely and I think it, it, it's a problem that has been going on as you say for a very long time and I think what has impressed me um, you know at, at, the, at the level well through the travels that we've been doing um, particularly you know, at Stanley where we've been looking at actually looking at these companies that actually invest there and actually putting our money in private uh, in companies for example that are in you know in, um, in manufacturing companies that for example supply tractors and um, fertilizers to, 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 to manufacturers to, to, to agricultural companies. That's something that's very important to look into, focus into. And also the, you're starting to see actually outsiders, um, people from outside South Africa, inv Africa, investors looking into these sectors through private equity and they're bringing lots and lots of money to actually focus on these areas. And a lot of people also um, from the Middle East, for example, you're seeing them leasing uh, uh, vast amounts of land so that they can produce food because food is not just a shortage in Africa, but it's also a shortage across the world and I think something that we haven't focused on that we need to look into. Again there are also all sorts of other sectors that make mm. for example um, in uh, building um, hotels, low-cost housing, things that we know how to do that actually also make doing business in Africa cheaper. You know, so when you travel, for example, to get to Angola, it's difficult, it's expensive because you know, hotels are far and few between. And the idea is that you know, we know how to do that here. Why isn't there, I mean, there's so many opportunities other than just looking at the main thing. I mean, if we have telecommunications, everybody wants to go into telecommunications. If you're construction, then everybody wants to go into construction. Why are we not looking at those opportunities that, that are there, that are needed, and that governments or, or, or the private sector would be willing to invest in because the opportunity is there. Why are we not doing that? Or are we not? Or are we doing it but not enough? Yeah, we are definitely doing it. It's not enough. Um, and I think sometimes it's been the breakdown between communication between governments and the private sector to form, you know, uh, public-private partnerships to go into the sectors that obviously government wants to be focused on and private companies can take advantage of and actually um, make good business of them. And I think we've seen some pockets, some examples of these. I know, for example, um, Maputo um, and you know the, the harbour there, what they've done is very good because they've said, look, it's, um, the harbour is very, it's something very important. We want a port that actually works for our own trade and for our own development. And they actually you know, spoke to a private company who's running the harbour for them. You know, and that's the kind of thing. Obviously, Obviously, everybody now, it's a win-win situation. We can continue to extend this forward. And I think that is where we should be actually looking at, but you know, looking at how we talk to each other much, much more. I mean, here's a juicy question when it comes to how we talk to each other. Just in terms of political will, how much is actually there? Because I mean, we've had static, we've had ECOWAS, we've had, you know, um, the, 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 the East African community. And, and that East African community actually seeming to be doing quite well in terms of regional integration. In static, for instance, that has been going on for such a long time, we keep on talking about it. It doesn't seem that we are getting there in terms of having integration. How much political will do we have on the African continent to make the changes that we need to, to be able to trade with one another? Yeah. It seems to be starting to happen. Uh, it's not fast enough, but certainly you are, you are starting to sit particularly in the structures. It's continuing slowly. Um, obviously, there are particular uh, political issues that countries themselves face uh, in want, and therefore, you know, looking outside sometimes gets very difficult. And some of these agreements have been uh, uh, staying behind because of uh, uh, politics within uh, individual countries. But certainly, I think we're starting to see a lot of progress on that field, and that's why we are very positive about the Africa story. Let's talk about red tape because this is something that is still there. I mean, sometimes when we have all the, I mean, it's, I think the opportunity in Africa is massive. We continue to, I mean, you just talked about seven, uh, seven of the largest, the fastest growing economies on the African continent. So the opportunity is here, here is massive. But sometimes there is almost a sense that we talk so much about opportunity that we're not really being, and, and I'll, I'll use the word truthful, about how much red tape is still on the African continent in terms of doing business, that sometimes you get people saying, you know what, I can't wait five, 10 years to have this finalized I mean to move somewhere else where it's easier to do business yeah sure absolutely but again it's the same thing that we're gonna have to spend the time I mean red tape must be taken care of and I think a lot of people are starting to talk about that again it takes us back to this idea of administration who's best at doing administration should we just be keeping these ports and uh, border posts being run exclusively by governments or should we actually be talking to private partners to actually run these but further than that I think we also should be saying you know, a little bit of patience is going to be important um, because, again, if we were trying to export to China, we would be facing some problems in terms of uh, trying to get our goods there with protectionism that we've been talking about before. So, you know, it is a, a game where we're going to have to be, you know, to try and balance out these things and think about them um, thoroughly. I want to ask you a little bit about private sector. How much is the, is the private sector on the African continent talking to each other? 
Well, I mean, um, I think, you know, you, uh, we attend a lot of these conferences and I think a lot of the private sector is starting to show up at the conferences, wanting to hear what's going on, why do I need to get into this co uh, to these countries, what has been experiences, and I think a lot of people are very interested, they want to go into, and that's something that's very, very positive. Thank you so much for coming, fantastic conversation, thank you, thanks for here. coming.